Hey, hello everyone. Welcome back to my channel. I'm Nisha Singla and in this session, we are going to talk about one of the interesting topic of JavaScript and that is debounce function. And we are also going to learn how we can use debounce to improve the application performance. Basically, implementing a debounce function from scratch is a common interview question as it helps interviewer to test your understanding of intermediate and advanced JavaScript concepts such as callbacks, scopes, closures and higher order functions and many more. And it is also one of the practical solution used in real world application to improve the performance. So without any further ado, let's get started. But before moving further, if you are not comfortable with these topics and want to master in these and want to get placed in top man companies, then I can tell you about one platform which can help you in achieving it and that platform is Geekster. Geekster is a platform where they offer full stack development course for complete tech and non-tech students. And if you even you want to switch your career to full stack development, then also this course is perfect for you. As it is a full stack development certification course with job guarantee salary ranges from 5 to 40 LPA and different tools and skills are going to cover like DSA, HTML, JavaScript, React, Node, Git, MongoDB, Java and lots of other. The best part about this course is you are going to learn from industry experts who are already working in top companies. Endless benefits like personal mentorship, interview preparation, soft skill trainings, regular doubt session, refer to the companies as well. All these things will definitely help you to get ready for the industry and real life projects which you are going to build during this course will definitely help you to build strong portfolio. So what you are waiting for, enroll in their 7 days live free trial classes. I will provide all the description about the Gigster in the description. You can check out all other details from their website. So now let's back to the topic. So before implementing a debounce function, I just want to show you one simple implementation without debounce function. And there we will try to understand what exactly the problem is and how we can solve that with the help of debounce function. So for that, flip to your editor. So here I have one index.html file and I have linked my JavaScript or my script file in this file, right? And there's nothing in this file as of now. Now let's add a text box. So suppose whenever I type something on this search box, maybe I want to auto suggest something or maybe I want to fetch some data from the backend. So now on this text box, I just want to do something on every key up. Okay, so for that open your script file. So here I will write simple JavaScript to get a reference of my DOM element. So I will use this query selector method that will help me to get a reference of this input. And there are different ways to attach an event. I will use add event listener method that takes two parameters. The first one is the type of event, it is click event, submit event, key press, key up. So I want on every key up, I want to execute my some logic that will be a part of this callback as a second argument. You can put some random message like data received from server. So now if you notice here carefully, whenever I type something here, you can see on every key up my this function is executing. So it means if five time I did this key up five time my this function is going to execute and it looks normal nothing wrong in that. But just try to understand the real life problem. As of now this function is not doing much right it's not doing anything actually. So suppose this function is going to hit my back end for every key up I'm suppose I'm hitting my database to get some data. So in that case, do you think it's the best practice? No, because in that case on every key up, I'm going to hit my server that number of time, which is definitely not a good practice. It is not good for the performance of your application. So that's where we have this debounce functionality. So debounce function basically force a function to wait a certain amount of time before running it again. And the function is built basically to limit the number of time a function is called. So I don't want on every key up my this function should run. Instead of calling that function on every key up, I just want to limit its execution. And there are multiple use cases of this debounce functionality. Uh, for example, suppose you want to show some suggestion for a search query like this, but only after visitor has finished typing it. Okay. Or we want to save some changes on a form, but only when the user is not actively working on those changes. Because every save cost up a database trip right and another use case is suppose you have a scroll event right on every page scroll maybe you want to handle some logic so if you are going to execute your logic on every scroll event it would be n number of scroll event right 
so that we don't want so to improve this behavior we have this debounce functionality so if you go to the flipkart also there we have we, where we can search some products right there also we can notice this behavior if you open the network tab see i search for laptop right but if you see here fetch api is only two so it means they are delaying the api call so here also debounce functionality is used so now let's see how we can create our own custom debounce so ideally debounce is just one wrapper function around your own function right that will implement the functionality of debouncing this is the logic which i am expecting from my server right so i can take it from here and i can kept it as a separate function right and let's give it a name of outcome and we can call our function from here like this right so this is a, also a correct way now logically if i talk about a debounce function debounce function is just a higher order function okay so we all know what is higher order function a function that takes another function as an argument or return another function that is called a higher order function uh, so now what i'm going to do i'm going to create one higher order function that function will implement the functionality of this delaying the function call and what is my function this is my function that i want to delay right so now this is my without debounce that i don't want now now with debounce let's see how we can do the first thing is we have to create one higher order function as i told you so let's let's say i am creating one hof debounce this is my higher order function so this function is going to take two argument the first one the function that you want to execute uh, so that I can hold in one parameter like this and another one is the timeout for how much time you want to delay it So this higher order function is gonna take these two argument a higher order function return another function, right? So here we have to return one function and This function is actually going to return your This function right which is going to hold in this function So here I can return it like this now how we execute higher order function we simply call this function hof debounce and we pass the argument my function reference is this function which i want to execute and maybe i want after every thousand millisecond i want to execute my this function it's a higher order function so here this result will point to this function right now this function we have to attach to our event listener so what we need to do add event listener and on every key up I need to call my result function so this is a very simple implementation of higher order function as of now if I try to enter something you can see still it's hitting five time right because there is no delay I have implemented as of now it's just a simple higher order function implementation that is the first step towards debouncing so just to recall what we have done so far to implement debounce functionality we have to create a higher order function that will take your actual function which you want to execute and how much delay you want to do to display this function as higher order function can take another function as an argument or it can also return a function as a return statement so here i am returning this function from this higher order function which will point to my result variable and that i have attached to my event and the dom element is this input tag now the next point is we have to delay right we have to delay the execution of this function by this much of time that we have passed as thousand millisecond so for that we have already built in javascript method that helps in delaying the execution that is set timeout right so what we need to do we need to wrap our this function to set timeout we can say set timeout and we can execute my function here and pass the timeout value and you can remove this one now so let's check now how it will work so after delay of this thousand millisecond this function should run so if i search for nisha it will wait for thousand millisecond there was a delay but after a delay also it ran that function five times again we we did the delay but again the, the function is running that number of time which is again not perfect right so ideally what we have to do we have to wait for 1000 millisecond but before 1000 millisecond if that event trigger and if that function ran in that case we have to clear the timeout so that unnecessary function call will not happen before 1000 millisecond that is the main point that you have to understand here so ideally all the timers that happen before 1000 millisecond we have to clear 
the way we have set timeout similarly we have one more function that is clear timeout that is used to clear any timer so that is also very simple what you have to do we can create one variable and we can hold this timer reference here like this and now here we can say clear timeout so let's test one more time if i type something it wait for 1000 millisecond and you can see my this logic that is written inside this function will only run once within this time frame right so it doesn't matter how many times this keep up will run but it will run my main function only after a delay of 1000 millisecond so this step is very important so to clear any previous timer or plan we have to use that okay but for the first time this timer will be undefined right so in that case this statement will not make any sense if like uh, for an example if i say console.log timer fine if for the first time if i try to hit you can see for the first time it is undefined so for the first time this will not make sense so you can also have a check here if the timer has some value only then do the clear timeout right so it can be done like this if we have timer only then do the clear timeout it is very very useful when you are making a very time consuming function so debouncing is a very important programming pattern or technique to restrict the calling of a time consuming function frequently by delaying the execution of the function until a specified time to avoid the unnecessary cpu cycles api calls and it improve the performance as well uh, last point here is maybe you want to pass some parameter as well to the debounce function so in that case you can use the rest operator like this and this argument you can pass to this function and again of course you can read it from here and you can pass it so if, if from here if i say e dot target dot value so you can see you can get that so this is all about how you can create your own custom debounce function and it is very useful and easy to use but yes of course you need to understand the concept involved in this function as we have used closures we have used higher order functions we have even used callback functions so this topic itself is a combination of lots of another javascript concepts right and i have shown you how to implement the debounce function in javascript however you don't need to use your own implementation of debounce in your projects right if you don't want to because there are so many javascript libraries already contain built-in implementation of debounce function like jquery has debounce method right even if you use lodash library there also we have debounce method underscore library also has debounce function so most of built-in library already have built-in function of debouncing so you don't need to write your own custom logic but it's always good to know the background of that function so that you know how to write your own custom logic wherever required this question is very important from interview perspective as well so i hope you understood the concept and if you like the video don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe my channel and i see you in the next video till then keep learning